Hi good people, Titus here for another Blender tutorial, and in this video I'll show you how to create custom alpha brushes to help take your sculpting to the next level. Let's not waste any time and just jump right into it. Okay, so we have the default uh, Blender scene here. Uh, I'm going to use this cube to demonstrate this example. So let's come to the modifiers by clicking on the little wrench or the spanner, and then we'll add our first modifier. And then under generate, I'm going to add a subsurf modifier. I'm going to bump it to two, and then I'm actually going to apply this. So I'll have to drop down and just hit apply. And now if I tab into edit mode, you can see that geometry unlocks for me. Now let's go ahead and right click shade smooth, and then we'll press S to scale it. And I'm just going to type in two to double the size. Uh, so currently I want to apply that scale. So I'll press control A, select scale, and that resets that back down to one. And now we are almost ready to sculpt. Uh, I'm going to be using the multi-resolution modifier uh, to do this sculpting tutorial. So I'm going to go to add modifier, generate, and then I'll use multi-resolution. Now you'll notice in the top left corner I have 192 triangles. Typically for sculpting you want to have hundreds of thousands of triangles for it to sculpt uh, effectively. Uh, so once you add your multi-resolution modifier you can just hit the subdivide. Uh, in my case I think I'm going to go six times. Give me about 786,000 triangles, uh, and that's a good area to be in for sculpting. So let's now head to the sculpting workspace by clicking it on the top. And I can try drawing on my mesh, and you can see it's very smooth. This is the sort of effect you want to have when you are sculpting. So if it's very jagged or it's you know not quite as smooth, it means you don't have enough geometry. Uh, you basically need to continue to subdivide or just add more geometry. You can remesh if you want to go that route. There's a couple different options there. Um, now for the alpha brushes, you can use any existing uh, paintbrush. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use the standard draw. Um, and then in the right hand side inspector, under the tool menu, um, it has my current brush showing here. I don't want to override that, so I'm just going to click this little button to add a new brush. And you'll see it adds a dot zero zero one. I'm then just gonna rename that whole thing called my custom brush. You can call it whatever you want, doesn't really matter too much. Now, you can adjust your texture and your stroke and your fall off settings in the right hand side details panel, but I like to adjust them at the top here. So you also have your texture, your stroke, and your fall off. I just find it's a little bit easier. Uh, you can also adjust the texture in the texture work, uh, little workspace section here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click new, and then we're going to click open, and I have some alpha brushes that I downloaded from the web. So I'm gonna go ahead and head over to my folder that has them. Uh, and I think for the first one, we will demo rocks and cracks number 30. So we got this one right here. Uh, so if you just start clicking around, or if you hold the mouse wheel and click, you can see it creates uh, this alpha brush in a tiled fashion. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. Uh, if you want to come to the texture settings at the top, you can switch it from tiled, and we can do maybe stencil. When you add stencil, it creates the image in the bottom left-hand corner. If you want to move the stencil, you can just right-click it and drag it over like so. Uh, and then if you want to resize it, you can, of course, just hold the Shift key and then right-click and drag in or out to kind of adjust the size. Or you can hold the control key and right click and then drag around to rotate the stencil. Now, basically, if you have a stencil in place, if you click anywhere else, nothing happens until you move over the stencil. So it basically keeps it where you want it to be. And that can be very handy. Now, I'm just left clicking to add this in, but you can also hold the control key and then click and drag around and it will do the inverse of the brush. So you have some that pull it out or some that pull it in depending on, or pushing in, uh, depending on what the effect is that you're going for. So you're gonna press Control Z to undo that. Uh, another important uh, note is in the top left corner, you have your brush size or radius, as well as your brush strength. And there's these little icons here. That is your um, pressure sensitivity if you are using a tablet. For this uh, demonstration, I'm using a mouse. So I'm gonna actually turn those off because those don't really help me right now. Uh, if you don't want to adjust it here, you can simply press the F key and that will address the brush size or the radius, or you can do Shift F to address the strength. So 
So as an example, let's look at the strength at uh, half. I'm gonna press F, increase the size of my brush. And then if I just click in here once, you can see that's the effect there. If I move around and press Shift F, increase my strength to one. And then I click once there, then I can move this off. And then you can see the effect when the strength is at one versus if it's at half. So you may wanna play with the strength settings depending on the effects that you're going for. Let's go ahead and undo that. So that is the stencil effect. I like the stencil a lot. Um, I think it's pretty good. Uh, the other one I like a lot is going to be the anchor. So when you use anchor, you'll typically want to select either random or maybe area plane. Either one of those is good. Uh, then you go to the stroke menu and you switch it from space to anchored. And then all you do is you just drag it out and then you can kind of rotate around and then you can kind of basically just put it wherever you need. And that works pretty good, kind of like so. so kind of layer effects like that uh, pretty quickly and easily. So let's go ahead and undo that and let's look at some other brushes. So I'll come to my right, right, uh, right hand uh, details panel, the little open menu, and let's maybe look at, uh, let's do the knuckle. So if I use the knuckle, drag this out, kind of looks like a knuckle, looks a little bit too strong. So let's do shift F, bring it down a little bit. And maybe that's more the effect you're going for. And if we hold the control key, I can stencil that out. And then you got your two effects there. Basically looks like the knuckle on your finger. All right, let's look at another brush real quick. Go back here and let's look at maybe the scale. Drag this out here. If I hold control, pushed in, you can see that's a very interesting reptilian effect there. And there's, you know, you can make these brushes. You can see they're, uh, this one looks like it's pretty complicated, but um, some of them aren't. Like, let me see if I have uh, some of these folders up here. You can look at the alpha uh, metal brushes here. So a lot of them just kind of look like they're random scuffs, like the, uh, as an example, the scratch one looks pretty simple. So that one is 19. So let's look at that. Metals, number 19. All right, so let's undo these. Oh, I undid my brush, whoops, hang on. I did all of it, okay. And 19. Okay. Let me drag this in, that's pulling out. If I hold control, like, so some of these, like you can see this one's very easy. You can make this in, you know, GNU or Photoshop or, you know, whatever imaging, editing software you got. Um, and you can create these, these alpha textures, you know, fairly quickly. And then you can use them in your Blender workflows to actually sculpt and then bake those details so you can actually get them into like your game assets and stuff, so. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of demo and show that off. It's pretty quick and easy. Uh, but all right, good people, we'll cut the vid here, but I hope you found some informative value in this topic that you can take into your own projects. But as always, thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and we'll see you on the next one.